Hi everybody, welcome to Carol Joe's. I am Carol, the owner and creator of all the things that you see on caroljoes.com. Today I am live on YouTube and on TikTok. Uh, I go live four times a week on YouTube, twice for tutorials and twice for chat times. I go live on TikTok seven times a week, two tutorials, two chats, two bead sales, and one jewelry sale. I also go live on my Facebook group with the jewelry sale. Um, I usually go live. I'm on both so that uh, we can just, just, you can see both. And then I do save my lives that I am live on YouTube, out on YouTube. So today's tutorial will be out on YouTube after the live. It takes a little while to get up in there, but we do do that. As always, with every live on TikTok, if you guys get to 10 shares and 10,000 likes, I do giveaways. Today's giveaway is going to be um, pens or jewelry. You get to choose between pens or jewelry today. So that is what we've got going on. So go ahead, share it out. Go ahead and tap on that screen so we can do giveaways. I do need to bring up my backup account of TikTok so that I can read comments. I do not have a backup account of YouTube. So when I go down, I will not be able to see your comments. All right. So here we go. Let's see if I am. Yep, I am there. So welcome in everybody. What we are going to be doing today, let me grab it. I forgot to grab it so I could show you guys. Good morning, Linda. This is what we are making today. It is called the hex nut bracelet. If you turn it sideways, it is made with hex nuts that are sewn together. In the peyote stitch is what the stitch that we use, the even count peyote. And um, I use fire line, which is, a, you can use it for jewelry making, but it's also, they make uh, fishing line. So it's a very durable um, product. Today, there are two sizes of hex nuts that I use when I make these. Um, you can do the smaller one is more, I do, ah! I was going to say this here is the larger one. So the smaller one is more for like feminine wrist sizes and masculine or feminine can use the larger one. I'm going to use the larger hex nuts today because it does go a little bit quicker doing it with the larger ones. Um, I've gotten it down because I've made so many of them. I've gotten it down to it takes me a half an hour, 45 minutes to make it. Um, here in the tutorial, it'll take me a little bit longer because I'm explaining as I go. Um, in the smaller ones, take a little bit more time. So you can get the hex nuts at your hardware store. It is the small size hex nuts. You can use any size that you want to use. Um, we looked up the small ones and I believe we said they were 3 sixteenths is what they were. And I don't remember what the larger ones are. But when you're at the hardware store, gravitate towards the smallest hex nut you can find and use that. Um, I have special ordered in the small ones from a... Um, hardware company that lives or that's in the town that I live by but you can go to like an ace and find them there it does take a lot of hex nuts I will warn you um so the small smaller hex nuts take somewhere around 120 to 140 um because it all depends on the size wrist that you're making it for the larger one that I have takes anywhere from 90 some to like 120 so it just all depends so the hex nuts are one thing that you'll need. Another thing that you'll need is you'll need two of a six millimeter split ring. So you see it's a split ring. You'll need two of those. You will need one lobster clasp. I have already attached one of my split rings to the lobster clasp. I use my um, split ring tool to put that on there. You will also need the fire line. And when you look at this, you will find that this is what it looks like for jewelry making. And if you would go to the fishing section of a store, the box looks the same almost. 
there's just maybe a little bit of wording difference and I cannot remember what the difference is, but they really truly look alike. So I'm just gonna say, if you can't get it at your local craft store or on the Amazon, wherever you want, you can also go to a fishing supply store. Um, this one is 20 pound weight and it is 0 0.30 millimeter. So 0.3 millimeter. And you can get it in different colors. So here you see, hi Joya, this one is the white or what they call crystal color. And you can get it in black. Um, you can get it in different colors. I just use this one. Both of them blend in with the hex nuts equally. So I just use this one. You will also need some beading wire, uh, beading needles. I'm like, what the heck are these called all of a sudden <laughs> to make it? And I just have little scissors in my little kit. I have a kit of all things like when I am doing anything with stitching. So it has my floss that I use for jewelry making stitching. It has the bead wire or bead wax in there. It's got everything and I just have a little pair of scissors in there. You can use regular scissors. It's just what I have in my little I call it a kit. So anybody have you probably have seen this. This is my kit. It's Tupperware. You know when you have garage sales, it's the garage sale Tupperware where you put your money in it. That's what this is. And I will show you. I have all kinds of stuff in here. I've got scissors. I have my split rings and um, lobster class. I have a project that I'm working on. I have my most common thread that I use in there. You lift it up and I have more thread. I have the beeswax. I have all kinds of stuff in there. And I even have the tin for an eclipse gum for my needles if I they're loose and aren't in one of these I know it's that's the little kit I think we all have certain things that we put things in like that so that is my kit all right now to do this first thing we're going to do is cut off our piece of try to find the end of it there it is our piece of our um, fire line. I use, and you guys aren't going to see this, three arms lengths. Go arm to arm. See how I've got it here where it's all the way out? Three arm lengths. And I know that sounds like a lot, but that's what I do so that I don't have to like um, have to add on. Because adding on, you can do it. I just don't like doing it. I take my time and slow down to try to not get knots so that I don't have to tie on. Some people don't like to and they can tie on. I suck at tying on. That's why I don't like to do it. Now, you're going to take just a little bit at a time and pull it. Because you want to get all of the circles out. Because if you look here, I'm going to bring this up. You see how it's all circled around? We want to get that out. We want to pull that. Hi, Chris. Pull that straight. I am doing good. How about you? So we're just going to keep pulling that all the way till we get down to the end again. And you can do it twice if you want. Or you can do it just once. Yep, it's fire line. It is 20 pound. We are making, let me grab it. I should leave it out, huh? I keep putting it back. It's 20 pound fire line that is 0.3 millimeters. We're gonna make this hex nut bracelet. We're being asked over here what we're making. Oh no, that's not good. We're gonna just take one of the beading needles Yep, you got it there. That is what we use. Well, hello, Zuli. Do we have two Zulis in the world? I thought we only had one, but now we have two. All right. 
And this is like one of the hardest parts of this entire thing, and that is threading your needle. So you're going to thread your needle. The way I was taught to thread a needle, hold your what you're gonna thread. Yes, she has one L in her name. Um, there is right between there, I'm gonna bring that up. Do you see how I barely have that above my fingers? Just do that and bring the needle eye down to that piece of thread and get it on there. And this is literally the hardest part of this. I might have to get a bigger eye needle for this, hold on. There are different size of beading eyes or the eyes of the needle with the beading one. So let me see if I have another one here. I have lots of needles. Let me grab another one Ugh. out of my container. Go with that one. All right, let's try this one. This one is a darning needle and not a beading needle. You can use different types of needles if you want. Whatever is easiest for you to get that on that eye. And I know you guys can't see because I haven't pointed down, but it's literally getting this onto the needle. Come on. There we go. Got it. See how it comes up just a little bit when you do that? And then you just pull it through. Now, you're gonna double this over. And you're gonna double over a lot of it. Not 100% of it, but a lot. So I've probably did over, I have half of it doubled and the other half not doubled, okay? Now, I'm going to, at this time, point you down to my bead mat so you can see what I'm doing. I have, um, I did set you guys up so that you could see at the top because being on two different devices, it was really hard to be able to do that and be able to be in both devices. So what I was thinking I would, excuse me, that I would do is that I will show you here and then through sometime this week, I will put up a video of it on the downside so that you can see from like your view, if you're making it, what it is like to do this bracelet. So that will be over on YouTube only as a longer video. So just be on the lookout for that. So if you're on TikTok here, go ahead and subscribe to me on YouTube so you can see that video by going to the CJS logo at the top, CJS logo at the bottom. You will see my link tree hyperlink. Tap that and go to the bottom of the list and that is my YouTube. Tap that and then subscribe so that you can see that. All right, because I was like trying, I was struggle busing with how to do this. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna go down here. So you guys should be seeing my bead map. And here is my hex nuts. First thing we're going to do, we are going to grab one hex nut. See, I just have one, one hex nut. Pull it all the way until you are about 10 inches or so from the end. Leave a tail. You use that tail to weave it back in. Now you see how I've got my hex nut is going on this way. You come around, so over here, see how it's that way? Come around to the bottom and go back through it the same way. You're creating a stopper with one of these here, like that. He is not a part of the pattern. He is just a stopper. Okay? We will take him off and use him at the end. What you're going to do is grab five hex nuts. 
three, four, five. Push them down. So see how I've got my five hex nuts on here? And you don't have to use a hex nut as a stopper. You can use a bead if you like, anything you would like. So we have the five hex nuts on there. Let's see. You're going to go leave him alone. He goes out and then go back and leave the second one alone and you go back through the third. And this is the hard part of starting this. The hardest part of this entire thing is really truly putting your needle on the thread. I'm putting my needle down while I push this aside because I have a lot of stuff. So now you'll see, I have two in my loop. Do you see the two here? We have one on top and one on the bottom. And I have my loop and I went through the third. Pull, gotta find my piece here, there it is. Pull this while holding it. I am pulling on my tail. <laughs> Pull this, not the tail, this piece, until you get, and I'm trying to show you here, where they'll sit like this. So you have the two on top of each other and that third one is next to it. Okay. Um, Joya, what size a hex nut? Um, it's the next size up. So when you go to the hardware store, here, let's see if I can do it this way. Let me show you this way. There we go. Okay. Do you see how you got two and you were going through this one and we have our string coming up between these two. That's what you're gonna see. Does that help you? Um, so when you go, it's fire line, Angela. It looks like this, fire line, 20 pound, 0.3 millimeter. Um, and you're gonna wanna hold this with your fingers and keep it together. Sure, I'll have to take it apart. Mm. Hold on, because I don't wanna take my needle off because that takes forever to get back on. Hold on, just give me a moment. I'll show you again, Marianne. The fire line is this. Okay, you just wanna see the box. Okay, then I won't take this apart. I'm sorry, I was getting that wrong. Okay, let me just pull this together then. The first five minutes of this Oh, uh, hi, Gladys. The first five minutes of doing this is the hardest. Hi, Danielle. Once you get this part down, it's just repetitive and you hold it and it just goes. And that's with the peyote stitch. So right here, I'm trying to turn it so you guys can see it. There we go. You have two, three we went through. Now here's two. We're gonna grab one hex nut Skip over two and go through one. You're gonna do in every other is the way this works. Hold it together with your fingers. And that's why my fingers are in the way. And you're going to get something like this. It doesn't look pretty yet. Doesn't look great. 
but once you start adding, it will go. So what we're gonna do, is I'm gonna take my finger out of the way. We are going to build on this. We're going to put one more on and we're gonna go through the higher one. And then we'll put one more on and go through the higher one. So right here, we'll put another hex nut on, go through this one. Put a hex nut on, go through that one. Yes, I am recording and it will be over on um, YouTube for this recording. And then I'm gonna do a second recording where it's going to be down so that you can see what I you would see when you're doing it rather than trying to hold it up to you guys and be closer. So we're gonna grab another hex nut on our needle, go back through the second one, and you see how I'm going, which direction I am going? I am going to be going back and forth. I don't know how else to describe it than back and forth. So I put that on and I pulled it tight. And if you notice, I loop this around my fingers and put it through my fingers to hold it tight. Grab another hex nut, go through. Do you see how I'm going through that higher one? And just take your time pulling this through. Do not get in a hurry and try to pull this through. That's what causes um, knotting and Frustration. Just take your time. Yes. Well, thank you, Zuli. So now you see this one's higher. So when you're looking at peyote stitch count, I'm going to show over on TikTok and then I'll come to you, YouTube. This is one, two, three, four. I have one, two, three, four. This is a four wide even count peyote stitch because I have four. So you're going to go through left to right and you are going to go through two and four. When I go right to left, I'm gonna go through three and one. Thank you for the puff heart rose. So we're gonna grab another one of our hex nuts we are going through three because we are going right to left. Pull that through slowly. Don't get in a big hurry. Pull it. And then sometimes they'll just like wing out like that. Just pop him up and on top of the one from the row before. Grab another hex nut. Now we're going right to left through number one. Slowly pull that through and get him to snuggle down on top of the row to the row before is number two. And you'll notice he's a little wingy. Let me see if I can get that to focus. There we go. We don't want him to wing out. We want him to lay straight. So get him to lay straight, pull it up snug, put that thread between to keep it snug. Grab another one, go through right, this is left to right. So if you noticed, here is my needle. I'm going left to right and I'm going through number two. That was the last one we just added. And you're just gonna pull this through slowly and get it to sit on top and then hold it tight. See how we got them to sit on top? Grab another one. This is gonna go in position three and we're gonna go through B or hex nut four. If you're doing it with beads, it would be bead four. You can do this same idea with like seed beads or like four millimeter beads and make a peyote stitch bracelet. It's the same concept. You can put designs in it when you're using it with beads. So now, I have one and three are my top two. So I want to add one to four and go through three. And you don't, you got to make sure with which direction you're going. You, every other row goes back and forth. So this one is going right to left. Pull that through.
And you see how that's not on there very straight yet? It's okay. We're going to put it on there, fiddle with it, and get it on there straight. Take the time to put them straight. And you will always want to hold your work. If you notice, there's my work. I'm holding it between my fingers. And I know you guys are seeing mostly my three fingers, but literally this is a really important part of this because holding this tight makes it so that you can um, work and it doesn't come undone and loose. So I'm gonna grab another hex nut. It's going to go in position two. See how I've got my little hole there for position two? And I'm gonna go one is the bead I'm going through and I am going right to left through one. There we go. Hey, he got up there really quick. Once you get like, and I told you the first five minutes are usually the hardest part of making this bracelet. The actual really hardest part is putting your needle, thread in your needle. But see, now that we've got our design going, what is going to happen is that it will just keep repeating and repeating and repeating. And it just, it's repetitive from here on out. Everything really will come together. So you want to just go ahead and I went and put one on top of three. I went through two. Two, I go left to right. Picking one up for position three. Going through four, left to right. Pull it so it's all taut. Now we're going to go through, pick one up. We're going through three, right to left. Put it in position. Pull it taut. And we're going to keep repeating this all the way through. And you know what I did not do today? Can anybody guess what I did not do today? It has nothing to do with the bracelet. All right, one. I'm picking up and I'm going through two. Two is left to right. I got my Dr. Pepper. I'm picking up three, going through four, left to right. I forgot to start music. <laughs> then we need to go pick up four. Go through three, right to left. You will notice as you're going through this, I'm gonna push that up. I wanna show you something so that you guys know. You will notice that every once in a while, you will get little kinks in there. When you notice them, undo them. It'll save you headache down the road. Just take it slow and steady. Slow and steady will win your race and cause you not to have um, angst. I don't know another better word to say. I'm picking up two, going through one, left to right. And I use my thumb to help guide that thread through. If you guys notice, I'm using my thumb to make it go through. The reason being, here I'm going to pick up one and go left to right through two is that it will then, see how I'm holding it here? And it keeps you from having a lot go through at once and causing them to tangle. So there we go. Picking up three, going left to right through four. And sometimes I want you guys just to always pause when you're done with a row and look at it. My row that I just had, I had a little bit of a gap in my thread. We will take care of part of that gap when we get to the end, but you can keep your thread from having big, long little pieces on the sides and stuff by just pausing and looking at your work as you go. 
So once again, we're grabbing four, we're going through three, right to left. And see, he's got a little bit of a knotish going on. Pause, do not just pull it through. Figure out what happened to cause it. And you just have to take the time and just look at it and analyze it. And sometimes it is that, you know, we doubled it up. Sometimes it's that little end of it, this tail part right here that got wrapped around a couple of times and you just have to unwrap it. And that is what happened here. More times than not, that is what's gonna cause us to have a knot. There we go. So find the end and then work its out way out. And that is what happened there. Now I wanna get that up on top of the other row four now. Make sure everything is tight, pull it around and then grab another one. But before I do that, I wanna make sure, I will do this every once in a while too. There we go. <laughs> grab another of the hex nuts for position two and we're going right to left in position for one. There you go. You will feel when you're doing this, sometimes you will feel that knot when it's going through between your thumb and stuff. Just slow down and see, you know, feel it and try to stop it from knotting. We're gonna go add for position one and we're gonna go left to right in number two. Same thing, we're gonna do position three, we're adding. I've got a little bit of a, my little thingies here. And then pull through. He doubled himself up. You gotta see what the heck happened here. It's my end again. He rolled himself around to another piece. So you just need to take time. Don't rush this. Even though I said I've got this down to where it takes me a half an hour, 45 minutes to make the bracelet, my expectation, it might take you two or three hours to do that and that is fine. So now I am on this side. So that's number four. We're going to grab another one, put it in four and go through three. Learning the peyote stitch takes time. This one, the hex knots are a little bit heavier than the using seed beads to learn this, but you can you learn it with the hex nuts. I was watching, so if anybody is friends with Alma on TikTok, she is a wire wrapper, which is something I cannot do very well. And she is self-taught. She hasn't even been doing it for a year yet. Like literally, the, she will tell you every day how many days it's been since she started wire wrapping. Today, when I was watching her before I came on my live, she talked about learning a technique that she was showing us that was for a beginner. And then you can use that technique to create more intricate designs. And that's the truth here. I'm showing you the very simple, yep, I said Alma. Um, but you can take the simple four even count peyote, learn it. Once you learn that, you can add and change up colors. It doesn't have to be just one bead anymore. Now, I'm gonna show you something here that happened. 
it wrapped itself around the nut. So I just have to pause and take a moment to get this unwrapped around the nut. And I just need to figure out what was going on. through this way. Through this way. And then pull it through. And see, we can do it. Yep. That's it. And hi. Sweet mama. Yes, yeah, she does. I buy TikTok stuff, I think is her, um, but she has like, when I see her, it says Alma too. The A-L-M-A. I know I say my A's differently than everybody else. <laughs> Thank you, Dana, for the follow. And hi, Brat. Okay, she has two accounts. All right, I didn't realize she had two accounts. I don't know that I follow both of her accounts. There we go. Just keep doing back and forth. We are about a third of the way done on getting the length of it. And today's tutorial will be longer than most because I am showing you the entire thing. I didn't realize she sold other stuff. I know she has like beading supplies and stuff, but I haven't seen her do that lately. Keep going. Yes. Are you looking to do something? Yeah, I finished up from last night. Okay. So, hold on. I got to tell my daughter what to do next here for me. In your, the room you guys are staying in, there is a box, like where you go to that little cove area, that has all of those beads in there those polymer clay beads, bring it up and can you combine them? I really want to put them in these plastic containers in number order, okay? You might need two or three, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, sorry about that. Just keep going steady, Eddie. Now I'm getting to a point, remember I said we had this doubled over? We got a little knottage going on, and it's not really a knot. It just, it doubled over. So hold on. There we go. So if you notice, I have this much here, and then we have a little bit. I don't want to undo it just yet and move that around, but pretty soon we're going to be moving that. Oh, she, I'm excited to have her helping me. It is taking a lot of stress off of me by having her help. So she is working on getting what we talked about last night. Um, the, um, what I think we'll deem it odds and ends. And she is getting those all set up so I don't have them. I literally have them in about five or six different places, not in any particular order. And she is helping me organize it. So that when we go to do bead sales of the odds and ends, it's all ready. So I am grateful for her help on that. It will clear up the floor in my bead room. All right. 
Just keep moving along, doing this. It will be a while. So if we want to talk while I'm doing this, you sure can. If you want me to explain something, you just ask away. Yep, we are trying. I'm trying to get rid of some of the stuff so I don't have to move it to the she shed when we finally get it all done and ready. And I was not paying attention and I got a big mess. It looked like a mess, but the thing is, is that it is really not that bad. I want you guys to take a moment to think about how to do this. Like here we have a big loop. I will take that loop and try to get it out as many of these as possible. I will find my end and go, okay, what did you do to the end here? And you just take a brief moment to not cause you frustration. And that's one of the things that this does take is called patience. Like here, I have a big loop here and he is going through this other one. If I bring him through, does it open it up for me? I also found my little end here and he was looping around some of that. So I'll take him off and you just ever so, so lightly and gently and don't get frustrated and take those off. And then this one is wrapped around the other thread. So unwrap it. I use the, they stack on the hex nuts. Ah, I got this from Timu. I know you're not supposed to say that word. <laughs> So this is, do you see, um, Rose, how that's sitting up there? See, yep. See, to me, I will tell you guys, this, to me, is relaxing. I know you guys are thinking, oh my Lord, with all the, um, you know, where you can get it knotted up and such. Oh, you're welcome. Um, it is relaxing for me to do this. I can sit in front of the TV with Ryan and work on this while he's watching his shows and then I'm sitting next to him. So when I made up a lot of these to take with me to my craft shows when I was doing in-person shows, um, these, I could spend hours watching TV with him. Am I watching TV? Heck no. Do I care about his shows that he watches? Some of them. But we could talk just like I am with you guys right now. I can talk to him and do this and feel productive. So that is, see, we got a little nottage. We'll get her done. We'll get them out. Just take the time to bring it through. There we go. If you don't want all of the, like what you see me going through, you can have a shorter length of the fire line. I told you guys in the beginning, there is a way to tie it on. I suck at tying it on. I can't even explain it to you. When I worked at the bead store, making the rings and telling you how to add floss or fire line like this to your project was the hardest things for me to teach. And so literally, I don't teach that part. I'm sorry. I know I teach a lot, but that is like one thing that is extremely hard for me. There's my little end. There. And it's usually caused by that end piece that we have to pull through. The beginning of our line. Yes, I do it because it is my enjoyment. And sometimes you just have to go like this and just 
and see if we can make it sit down. There. And I started doing, um, I do all kinds of crafts. And it was funny because those of you that were watching last night, we were talking about Buttercup, which for those of you that are new, Buttercup is my granddaughter. We don't give out her real name here. We just call her Buttercup. And um, someone said she can craft. She learns how to craft so much from both my daughter and myself because I was crafting with my kids. So they, you know, mama teaches her stuff and I teach her stuff. And that was how I was raised. My grandparents spent a lot of time teaching me how to do different crafts. I'm trying to find where that was at. I think I got it out without even trying to. Okay. So um, it's going from generation to generation. And I had a grandfather who taught me how to craft. Oop, I found it. So back in the day, does anybody remember the macrame um, pot hold or not pot holders? The macrame planters that you would hang from your ceiling, and so um, he taught my sister and I how to make those. He also taught my sister and I how to do latch hook. He loved to do latch hooks. So they lived on a farm. Both my grandparents were farmers. My grandpas were farmers. My one grandma was a teacher and my other grandma was a homemaker. So they were on the farm all the time in South Dakota winters are long and hard. You don't get to get out because you get snowed in a lot. And so um, they would craft. My one grandpa that wasn't the crafter, he played the piano or the organ at night when we were snowed in and sang to us. And my grandma would do crafting or her, do her like grading papers and stuff if she needed to. And my other grandma did crafts and my grandpa would watch TV or do crafts with us. And we are also taught to read a lot. So that's what I grew up. With. So as a child, my best memories are with my grandparents doing crafts. <laughs> Some of my best ones. We also played a lot of board games and card games. Do I do any of that now? Nope. I'm gonna try getting this through and then I gotta figure out. He's knotted around just his own self. All right. Oh, I'm going to do, a. it will be out on YouTube, Cindy, for sure, today's. And then I am going to do it from a different angle, too. So hopefully by the end of this next week, a week from today, you will have it where it's like this and from the top angle down so that you guys can see it. So don't despair. You will be able to watch a video of it, Cindy. You're welcome. And so those of you um, that don't know, I do, if I am, I'm on two devices right now doing this recording, TikTok and YouTube. If I'm doing it with YouTube, I do save those. They're underneath right now, the live, when we are live. There's a section on YouTube for live videos and that's where this will be. I got a little bumper here, I thought. Nope, he is not there. Okay. Keep going.
Thank you, beautiful disaster, for the follow. I was going to say, I, I have done so many different crafts. The one thing I do not know how to do is I do not know how to knit. I was taught to crochet, but I was not taught how to knit. I was taught how to sew on the sewing machine. I am better at some than others. I will tell you, I stink at doing a straight line on the sewing machine. So my thing is, is that jewelry is actually the niche that I love the most. And that is why you will see me out here all the time doing jewelry stuff. Oh, you do soap. Cool. I have never tried that one. And if you notice, as I'm going through this, I will take time that you just... You... This is a hex nut is what this one is, um, Cindy. Um, you can use seed beads or like four millimeter size beads doing this. Ah, see my only side business is my jewelry. I have my full-time job Monday through Friday, except for this weekend. I have been on my full-time job doing a release. We got it as much as we could get done at about 7.30 this morning. So I am off work now. But we got to finish some stuff up and talk about it on Monday. Um, literally, Joya, for this type of thing, the three or four millimeter that you're talking about are the seed beads or the hex nuts are both about the same to learn for complexity. Um, this is just heavier when you're holding it. If you want something lighter weight, you can use the seed beads. Um, do you like to learn, if you wanna learn it, do the 6-0 six, seed beads, just in any color, just one color and just do that. Or if you wanted to make sure you could keep track of your, um, you know, your one, two, three, four, you could use four different colors of seed beads. And um, row one is one color, row two is a different one, row three is one, and row four is one. And that way you will see when you're working on it what row you're actually in, or not row, column, I should say. Oh, I could not do that. <laughs> I was going to say, beautiful disaster. Woo. Oh, you add hex nuts? I have never tried it. You, If you try it and see what it does, and if you get something that you are like, okay, I'm good with, like always, you do it. Take the pictures and show, because that would be kind of, I think, cool. I just have never done it. Time to pause with my thread because it's starting to knot up again and straighten her out. There. There we go. When you do um when you do it with seed beads, you usually use the um it's called Nymo thread. And if you go to one of the box be or craft stores, you'll see it there or you can order it online. But the Nymo thread, and it comes in different sizes. I use size B the most often. And when you use that thread to keep it from um, fraying, you use beeswax to coat the thread. And I can show you that after we get done here.
do this again. My tail wrapped around again, so we got to get my tail out. This is the most common of what happens. You get an X with your tail, and so you literally what you do is unravel it. It's usually just wrapped itself around. That is like the start of usually, yep. And it's N-Y-M-O, I believe. Let me see how it's spelt. Now I gotta like look it up because I'm like, yeah, and I'm gonna put it in here in the chat for my backup account, okay? N-Y-M-O, except for they don't like it, N-Y-M-O. There we go, and I put the size there. It's B, like boy. Oh, you're very welcome. And I'll show you what the little, they are um, bobbins is what they're called. They come on a bobbin. I am pulling through when I should not be. I should take a moment and pause. There we go. And then figure out what happened. Shoop. And I have, I will be honest with you guys, I haven't done a lot of the thread sewing jewelry making like this since I had my LASIK so finding the knots is different for me just to let you guys know why it's sometimes taking me longer <laughs> and it's been almost a year since I had my lace well no had it done in January of last year. When did I have my LASIK done? Yeah, it's been over a year. But I haven't done sewing like this. And so I'm trying to find my sweet spot of where I can see it at. And it is a little bit different, I will tell you. So those of you that are new, I did have LASIK, like I said, over a year ago. And my LASIK is where I see one eye close up and one eye far away so that I wouldn't have to have readers. And there are some certain spots in that changing it it's called monovision that is hard for me to see i have a mess gotta just slow down and take the time to get rid of the said mess here where is my end there it is around 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 he wrapped himself around like five times here and caused a good old mess
Where is my end? Here he is. There. There we go. He just looped himself through there. Oh, that one was the one. There you go, Joya. There. We're getting close to getting done with all of our hex nuts. We have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, because I got one at the end here. I might have to grab another one. There we go. Hi, Sherry. Whoop. Um, depends on the size and it's usually between, if we're doing the larger hex nuts, they will be between, um, 90 and 120 ish, the smaller ones, 120 to 140. And I got to do my piece so I don't lose you guys. There we go. This one is 26 rows of four. So it would be 104. I need one more hex nut yet. There we go. And I will show, I'll tell you guys what size it is when I'm done. We'll put it on our cone. I need. Oh, hey. I might be able to. <gasps> I got the hex nut size, you guys. It's on my thing here. Three and three. Here's the small size. I just got it. I didn't realize I had it in here. This is the small size hex nut. I need one of the bigger ones. There they are. Let me see if I've got them in here. Nope, I don't. No, that's not the right size. That's bigger. Yet than these. That was the small. I have two different sizes here. I just go to the store and buy them in bulk. Is that, that one's the bigger one again. Here it is. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Yep. You can use any size. Because if you notice, I have three different sizes, four different, three different sizes here. I have a larger one. I just go to a hardware store that you can buy them by the pound. All right. So if you guys notice... I have my entire length of all the hex nuts. There's uh, 26 rows of four. And they, a row is one, two, three, four. 
So what I do now is that I'm going to put on half of my closure. And if you notice, I have a long thread. There is a reason why, which I will get into in a moment. Before I get put on my closure, I'm gonna go on my side here, because this is where I came out of, is this side. Grab through the strand, or the fire line, and create just a knot. And just pull it tight. Okay, now take your needle, go through the two on the side here, come up in position two, grab the split ring closure. You can do either the one with the, um, with the lobster clasp or without. It's up to you which one you grab at this point. You just need half of it. And go through number one so that he is sitting in position two. Go down here to the row below and go through like you're doing a U. Weave back through however you want to weave through so that you come out on the other side on the bottom position like one row below. See how I'm like one below? Here's my closure. And then just do that circle again. And do that three times. What you're doing is that you're going through this and creating the um, thread to go through your closure, that split ring, three times. So I've done it twice and I'm getting back up here where I'm gonna go through here again, go through that and go through one. Okay, pull it through. I got my loop, there we go. Now I'm going to tie on this side and just grab one of your threads and tie it. Not that you don't have to do all of them that are there. Just do one of them that you can grab a hold of and make a knot, just like a sewing knot. And that way, if something were to happen and and pull on it and get it tight, um, if something were to happen and the class breaks off, you're not having all of your work come off by when you did the, before we did added it, we knotted on this side. And then after we're done, we're knotting on this side. So if something happens and you wear through all three of those pieces of the fire line, which doesn't happen, let me tell you, you're not going to lose your entire work. You can just add on the clasp if need be. Now, you will feel this when you're working with it. This, because we went through it three times, is, and I don't know another word to say than stiffer or it doesn't move as much, as down here. There is a difference at how it is bendable, but it is just feels stronger. So we want to go back through all the way down to the bottom and weave this so that we have a second thing for everything. So what I do is I just go through two, two of the hex nuts. So I went through two of the hex nuts and pull. And you're just weaving your way and giving extra string, extra fire line to your work. I go through the next two. You're going to do this weave through every single hex nut all the way back down. I do two at a time. If it's not easy for you to do two at a time, do one at a time and just literally go back through the entire work and make sure you hit every nut all the way back down and get two pieces of that fire line through it. 
And so like I do one and two, then I go back and I do three and four. That one I'm only gonna get one on because I couldn't get my needle to go through both at the same time. So it's however comfortable. If you can do two, do two. If not, just do one. And sometimes I just have to lay this down to do this. And it's just to secure it so that you have two pieces. So if one piece gives away, you have a second piece of the fire line. And I got a little knot, so I just need to take a moment and not get them all tied up and get them off. There we go, got it done. Just take your time and go through. Because of the way you weave, sometimes you'll go through some of them more than once and that is okay. You just wanna secure it. This will just take a few minutes and that's what we need that extra line for. I seriously cannot get through. It is tight enough that I cannot always get through more than one at a time. And that is fine. This just takes time. Do, 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 go. The little tail wrapped himself around. That's the piece of the tail. I'm like, where is my tail piece? There we go. Yes, I am. Yes, you would do the same thing for seed beads too, Joya. Not just the hex knot, but your seed beads. Whenever you're doing this, you do this through just because it gives it an added strength. Just like when you're sewing, if you get close to where the two looped over, you got to extend on, and I need to do that. There we go. I will be doing two videos on this one, the one from the live today, and then I will be doing another one where I'm doing it from above so that you guys have a different view to see it. Oh yeah, you guys, that's why, if you guys don't get a chance to do it right now, I would I would totally get it. That's why I'm loving this whole entire YouTube on the lives. Um, Because then I can post it for when you guys want to do it. And if you want to stop it and like take time, you don't have to memorize it all. But doing it with the lives is saving me from having to create content multiple times. And I love it. There's a lot of things that we talk about as we run our businesses. 
about um, things that take time and you're then you don't get to spend as much time doing other things. So that's why having um, Courtney helping me right now get all of those items ready for our bead sales, it takes time to do it, but I love doing the bead sales. And so she's able to help me out with that aspect of it. And I don't feel so bogged down with all the details. I never realized while I've started this business with the way I'm running it now, how much time a lot of the details take. You know, I honestly am not a marketer, so I have my the agency helping me with marketing. Um, is that what's needed for every business? I don't know, but I'm trying with mine to see if I like it. Um, there's the bookkeeping part of it. I can keep track of my receipts, but when it comes to payroll, that's not my forte. I actually, we, you know, I told you guys we were looking at finding a new accountant. Um, my accountant will take care of payroll for me. When you're running a business, the one thing that I have learned as, as I've been doing this is that we are not as human beings good at everything. We are great at certain things. We're okay at certain things and we're good at certain things. And some things we just stink at. And the one thing I will tell you guys, if you're going to be a, someone in business, knowing what you're good at, what you're stink at, what you're great at is huge. You do not have to be the jack of all trades when, when you're running a small business. You have to know your limitations so that you can find people to be a part of your team that can help you out. I really feel like taking the time to pause and do that with what I'm doing right now is helping me become even more successful. So I thought I would just share that little nugget with you guys. With everyone. I got to stop saying guys. <laughs> Sometimes I will tell you when I am doing this, um, sometimes I will accidentally come through with my needle in the hole. You got to be careful of that. Sometimes I will catch this part of it in my thread. You just got to be careful and pause and see what you did. I have done those things multiple times. So far, knock on wood, I haven't done either. What do you mean by with the texting, Miss uh, Rose? Taxes. Oh, taxes. Yes. I totally 100% agree with you. And I have, I have had awesome accountants to help me through it. And like I said, you're allowed to interview people that are going to be. If you were having an employee on your team, you would interview them. Um, so my thing is, is that what I want to say is when you're looking at having attorneys as part of your team, accountants, the planners, like your financial planner, you have the ability to interview them and find the person that's going to fit for you. Taxes are scary as all but jeebie -geebie. And what I like about my account that we have right now is that we have a game plan of how we're doing payroll. We have a game plan of how we um, have expenses and write-offs, how we can maximize our dollars to get the bit most bang for my buck and making plans of what forms to file when, how to have the company set up for tax purposes. Um, 
that's part of the interview process is what their fees are. So I will let you guys know. Um, I don't usually talk a number, but I will give you this number, okay? And this will help you understand what I'm going to say. So we have used an accountant in the past. My husband has used this accountant since the early 90s, mid maybe mid-90s, okay? He has used the same accountant. He retired. We had personal stuff that I'm not going to get into that would, um, it comes with having a blended family is all I'm going to say on how you have to file taxes. Every year, he would have to do letters for us to the IRS because there's state and federal laws that were a part of a blended family. And we used to pay him because we had to have so many letters written to the IRS on this case that we would pay him around a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a year. And that was to do everything, to write our letters, to do our taxes, etc. Then he retired. We no longer have dependents. And so our taxes with the firm that bought him out went down to like just under $800 a year for everything that we used them for. And we thought we were, it was great. We were excited with that. When we went to interview people, the person that we ended up going with charged us, charges us um, $300 to file our taxes. Hi user 143 Guadalupe. And then for everything else, it'll be around $100 a month. Do I think that that's outlandish? No, because that's saving me money from having to figure out taxes. So yes, it will be now $1,500 a month, but I feel more confident and very, very, very um, wanting to go with this individual. Because the firm that we went with before, when I said they charged us $800, they messed up our taxes last year. And we went with that firm because th that is who our accountant sold out to. So it's not all about money sometimes. It's about making sure you have the person that's doing it correctly. So when you look at it from that aspect, I know some of you are like, you, that's a lot of money. I get it. But I now know I feel in confident hands. And I don't have to do my anything for, for it. She will take care of it. Yes, they messed them up. And on top of it, their, our uh, tax information was leaked in a data breach. <laughs> yep, and that's what it comes down to, Joya, is... Um, I totally get it, but um, the thing for us is that my business, because I have more than just this here. You know, when we're, you've heard Zuli talk and she has multiple businesses, Ryan, and I have multiple businesses too. I don't talk about everything here about it, but yes, we do. And that's for everything. Ryan and I decided we've been talking about things and making decisions about our incomes and stuff and having multiple sources of income so that in case something were to happen, we've got another source. Not everybody is able to do that, and I totally understand it. And I'm not, we are at a point in our life where we can do it. Had it been 10 years ago, no, we would not be able to do where we're at now. Hi, Lady Silver. It's Lucy. How are you? So that's where we are coming from. 
we are, um, we always say, you've heard me talk, I am a believer in God. Um, he's helped us out. We have gotten to a place where we're very grateful for everything that he helps us provide for. I am doing good, doing good. We're almost to the end of our second side here for this bracelet that we're working on. Okay, so remember I had my stopper down here. This, I'm gonna move it down a little bit because I want it out of my way to work on this last little bit here. Okay, we are there. Okay. Yep. That, thank you, Joya, for that. I really appreciate that. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go through, this is one. I know it's backwards, but we are at the bottom of it. So this was one. We're going to go through one. We're going to grab that uh, split ring and go through three and four. And I forgot to do my knot on that end. So I'm going to do a knot really quick here. It's okay that I didn't do my knot. I will do it on both sides, just so that things don't take a skew. Then we're gonna pull that tight. Then we're going to go through and make that circle again three times so that we can secure down. And I don't want this piece in there. I want him out of the way. So I'm gonna go down here. I'm going to do a knot on this one because I forgot to do it when we did it the first time. So I'm just going to do it really quick. And it's just to save it in case something were to happen and our whole entire bracelet does, doesn't fall apart. Okay. There we go. Here's number two time around. And here is number three. Okay, I'm gonna knot again on this side. This is going to be what I will call knot number one. We're gonna get that all in there. Now, whoops, I hit my Dr. Pepper bottle. Now we are going to go through the second row down and go through maybe just one. You get to decide where you want these at. We're gonna place two more knots randomly in this bracelet to end our piece. So go ahead and let's get knot number two going here. And this is just like when you're sewing where you put it through the thread. There we go. Weave down a little bit. And then do knot number three. Okay. And this is for one end of our string. So this will be, and you wanna make sure you do not go underneath that you'll stay on the same side. Cause I have done it when I got it all the way done. And then I had it wrapped around here. Make sure you're not getting it wrapped around. Now cut off your piece of thread the fire line is not thread. Take your needle and then you can throw it away or reuse if you want. I just throw that away. Now, remember we had the hex knot on here as my stopper? 
go ahead and pull that off. Thread the fire line on your needle again. And remember, this is literally one of the hardest things about this whole entire bracelet. See, for getting knots and that type of stuff, to me, that is not a hard part. Threading a darn needle, oh, that one went way better than the other side. We've threaded it. You are going to, once again, try to get just one of the pieces of thread or just a little bit of it, not the whole thing. Do your loop and knot it. Go down a little bit and in a different spot than what you've knotted before, go ahead and create two more because that outside one is number one and inside will be two more. I just pinch it between my fingers is what I do, Rose. Is that what you're talking about? And I bring my needle down to the thread. I don't use my thread to the needle. See, like here, do you see how I got that wrapped around there? You don't wanna leave it like that. You want to catch that before you create your knot like that, take it and then put it through there. Ah, I've never tried that before. I'll have to try it. And then there it is. Here is our bracelet. Now I'm gonna grab my, um, let me put him in here. I'm gonna grab my cone and we're gonna figure out the size of this one. This is actually the smallest size that I make for the larger hex nuts, the 26 row. So I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. We don't need it down so much. I tightened up my um, camera for TikTok, sorry guys. And now it's really stiff for me to move you. This one is a size small, he's six and three fourths inches. That is how you do that. All right, I told you guys I was gonna show you the bobbins from Nymo Thread. So this is, and you can get Nymo Thread in different colors. This is what the bobbins look like. This one is white. You can get it in different colors. I have tons of colors. Let me see if I have them in here. Yeah, here we have red. I have some blue. We have more white. This one has all different colors. We got blue, black, purple in this one. And then this is my D. Those are all Bs. And then this is my Ds which is a different size. I've got green, blues, and then black, yellow, and red. So you can get it in different colors. I use the different colors, and I haven't finished this, so you can't really tell. I've sewn together a netting um, for, it's for you put it over the top of a Christmas ornament. Um, this is beeswax that I use with the Nymo thread. You can also use, it's a thread conditioner it's called. It comes in a little container that looks something like this. And you use this to condition the thread too. I just happen to like beeswax better, personally. Um, I, I, don't use the um, Nymo thread for this because it isn't as strong as the fire line. So because of the size of the beads or the hex nuts and how heavy they are, I would use the fire line. But when you're making um, the peyote stitch with just the beads, I use the Nymo thread for that. And I do not have that. I'll have to look and see where I have. Sorry, my eye is really watering. Um, no, I don't use the fire line. Um, beeswax on the fire line. You don't need to. There's a coating. There's a clear coating on the fire line. 
that makes it so you don't need to use it if you don't want to. Um, maybe I should, maybe someday I should get out my, my uh, seed beads and show you some of the different things with seed beads. So I can, I will make this same exact bracelet here like this. Instead of doing four, I will use six rows of the, like the either eight O or six O um, seed beads and just make a bracelet like that. Hi crafty. Um, I will do, there is a pattern that is called a twist and you use 11 O's and eight O's for that one. Um, I'm trying to think of what else do I used to do. And then when I do the closure for the peyote stitch, I actually use buttons. Beeswax is just really truly beeswax, but it conditions your thread when you're using that Nymo thread so that it doesn't fray as you're using it. So did you do a lot of that, Miss Rose? So like what she's talking about, the indigenous or the native jewelry, they create some of the most, they will use all the way down to even 15 O. Yes, yep. Yep, the beads wax or that thread conditioner goes with the Nymo thread. Um, but they will create the most intricate artwork with the smallest beads. It is so beautiful. I can't do the picturing of it. It is really hard for me. Um, okay, so Rose used to do earrings and some necklaces like the Circle of Life. And... It is just beautiful work. And there is an individual that um, he is down in New Mexico that he does a lot of seed bead work out there. His granddaughter puts it out on TikTok for him for sale. It's really cool. I cannot think of her name right now, but it is really, really cool. So when we were going on our trip through... Um, through down to Arizona, when we went through New Mexico, I was like thinking of them. And I have actually bought beads from the store where he goes and gets his seed beads at. And it's in Albuquerque, I believe. I can't remember where it was at in New Mexico. Yeah, but the thing is, is that once you do it, sometimes it just comes back and you're like, okay, I can do it. <laughs> Even many years later, it might be a trial and error a couple of times, but it'll come back. <laughs> so, yes. So, you once you learn how to do the peyote. Oh, I did not know you lived in New Mexico. Um, you will be able to do lots of different things. And there are a lot of patterns out there that you can use for it. I just, I'm a more of a simple, I just keep it simple when I do it. But the, um, the twist, you can create the base of the twist and it, that's the 11 and 8 oh, And then you can add loops on the twist and make it even more. Hey, we finally hit it. And you can learn so much more or make it more intricate for that. All right, we're going to do it with a um, number this time here. All right, start. And it is a number between 1 and 50. So go ahead, and we're going to do either jewelry or the pen or the stylus type thing. We'll see who wins. See, for our piece of jewelry, it will be, ooh, and our pen will be that one. Okay. This one took me a while. I'm going to put that one back because that one <laughs> took me a while to figure that one out. We'll go with that one. <laughs> All right. Two people have got it. Let's see who the winner is. Rose, it is you, Miss Rose. It was 13 was our number. And then someone else got it too, but you were after Rose. And I forgot to say who it was. So, Miss Rose, you get to choose. 
I have the necklace here. Let me get that. There we go. We got that necklace. Or we have the pen. Oh, I don't need to take it out. It says, cluck around and find out. So there is the chicken pen. And this pen has... <laughs> All right, bye, Joya. So Rose just needs to let me know which one she wants. The pen, all right. We will get that one to ya. Oh, maybe I can open it, there we go. All right, thank you. So that is what we have for our tutorial today. Thank you everybody for sticking around. Today was a longer one. Um, if you guys have questions on it, you're more than welcome. You can always reach out to me. You can message me on either of the, um, you know, leave me a comment here on YouTube or you can message me on TikTok or you can always get to me by the contact me at caroljoes.com and do it that way. But I had fun with this one today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yes, it takes patience, but I love making it with those needle and thread ones. I love making those. So I hope you all have a great weekend. We will be back Monday at 8 p.m. Central Time. Bye, everybody.